were underage. We were little girls. I was 16. I was 16. I started going to him when I was like 14, 15. 14 turning 15. If you think at 14, $200, that's a lot of money at 14 years old. I mean, that's a lot of money now. She's like, oh, you know, do you need to make any extra money? I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay, I can give you know, like $200. There's this older guy in Palm Beach. He gets a lot of massages from girls. You know, that was really Okay, hey everyone, Red Pill here. I just got uh, word about a court case against Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein, uh, which was filed back in uh, April of 2016, 26 April 8, 2016. And this is a court document, uh, a federal court document, and it is Katie Johnson versus Donald J. Trump and Jeffrey E. Epstein. And this is a co complaint for claim relief due to sexual, number one, sexual abuse under threat of harm, and number two, conspiracy to deprive civil rights. Now, I got hold of this because uh, I want to, and I want to give a shout out to the Moral Compass YouTube channel. Props to her. She sent this to me in a video. It's a true news video report, uh, and they're talking about this uh, document. I'm just going to read a little bit of this, and then we're going to go straight to the report, and then after that, I may have some commentary. So starting out, <clears throat> after the defendants are named, we have uh, plenty, plaintiff Katie Johnson for causes of action against Donald J. Trump and Jeffrey E. Epstein alleges as follows. Then we have a jurisdiction note, a venue note, jurisdiction is pursuant to law, blah, blah, blah. Plaintiff resides in the state of California while defendants reside in the state of New York. And the action is for damages above $75,000. Venue is established in the Eastern Division of the United States Central Court District of California because the plaintiff resides in and it's redacted. Okay, so parties. The parties are the plaintiff is Katie Johnson, who resides in the state of California. The defendants are Donald J. Trump and Jeffrey E. Epstein, each reside in the state of New York. Here are the factual allegations. The plaintiff, Katie Johnson, alleges that defendants Donald J. Trump and Jeffrey E. Epstein did willfully and with extreme malice violate her civil rights under 18 U.S.C. 2241 by sexually and physically abusing plaintiff Johnson by forcing her to engage in various perverted and depraved sex acts by threatening physical harm to plaintiff Johnson and also to her family. Yikes. The plaintiff, Katie Johnson, alleges that the defendants Donald J. Trump and Jeffrey E. Epstein did also did willfully and with extreme malice violate her civil rights under Section 42 U.S.C. 1985 by conspiring to deny Plaintiff Johnson her civil rights by making her their sex slave. Wow. The, K the Plaintiff Katie Johnson alleges that she was the subject to extreme sexual and physical abuse by the defendants Donald J. Trump and Jeffrey E. Epstein, including forcible rape during four-month time span a four-month time span covering the months of June through September in 1994, when Plaintiff Johnson was still only a minor the age of 13. Let that sink in. The Plaintiff Katie Johnson alleges she was enticed by promises of money and a modeling career to attend a series of underage sex parties held at the New York City residence of defendant Jeffrey E. Epstein and attended by defendant Donald J. Trump. On the first occasion involving the defendant Donald J. Trump, the plaintiff Katie Johnson was forced to manually stimulate Donald Trump, the defendant Trump, with the use of her hand upon defendant Trump's erect penis until he reached sexual orgasm. Ugh. On the second occasion involving the defendant Donald J. Trump, the plaintiff Katie Johnson was forced to orally copulate defendant Trump by placing her mouth upon defendant Trump's erect penis until he reached sexual orgasm. Uh, I think you can see this is going to be a pretty depraved report um, involving uh, Epstein and Trump. And this is a case that came to the fore uh, when Trump started running for president, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. And I remind you that when the defendants in these cases, in these high-profile cases with these high-powered people, are known... Uh, it's pretty common that they will receive death threats. And that's probably why, you know, she, I, I, and that's pure conjecture on my part is that she probably why she dropped the case. I don't know. Maybe they paid her off. I doubt that. 
I bet anything that she is or was in fear for her life, maybe she still is, but she does have an active website according to this video report. So I don't think it's something that she made up. If she's got an active website this far down the line, obviously she has something to say here and something to prove and she has a valid claim. Otherwise, why would she maintain a website? I don't think it's for money because I don't think she's getting any. So, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at the video report and then after that, maybe we'll do a little more discussion or maybe I'll read a little more from this document. Right, let's, let's just see how it goes with the report. To revisit a story that came out at, at, during the 2016 campaign and it got very little publicity and then it just disappeared in November when President Trump won the election. And it's, it was an accusation by Katie Johnson that she said that uh, she was 13 years old at the time and Jeffrey Epstein and Donald Trump argued among themselves over which one of the men were going to take her virginity from her. Innocence. her. Now, at this point right now, if, uh, if you have children in the room, you need to just clear out the room because this is going to get really graphic at this point. So just hit pause and get your kids away and listen to this later because there, there's no way for us to present this without just telling you, letting you hear exactly what she said. And it is, it's graphic. Okay, this is not... And this is from court documents. This is not going to be TBN, all right? This is not your normal mom, you know, it's not your grandmother's Christian TV show right now. Right. All right, this is real stuff. We're talking to you about what's really happening. But it's, it, this, I, you know, I don't mean to offend. I'm not trying to shock people uh, by playing this. I'm, I am trying to shock you that there is a pedophile network in America involving rich, powerful men, and it's involved in occult uh, Luciferian sacrifice of children. That's what I'm trying to shock you into understanding. And it potentially reaches the White House, so much so that that's the reason why our labor secretary has stepped down. He says so he doesn't want to bring any more attention, but that's the reason. It's and the yeah. sex and It crimes. will eventually lead to Chabad Lupovich. Mm. And you do say men. This is women as well. High-powered women yes. involved. They are bo on both sides. Yes. Men and women involved with these sex traffickings. They're, they're, Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so this, uh, this uh, young woman, at the time, she was 13 years old. Uh, she came forward in, in the fall of 2016 with one of these lurid uh, tales of being raped by Donald Trump and you know the, the the attitude among the Trump supporters at that time was we don't believe any of it they're all lying uh, the Clinton campaigns bringing out one crazy accusation well, yeah, again, you, after another and we don't believe any of it and we're not listening to any of it. You had guys like Michael Avenatti, like poisoning the water for true victims. And maybe Stormy Daniels has a case. But when you, you when you interject those kind of characters into it, Gloria Alfred, yeah, yeah, you just it just looks like oh here goes another. You yeah, know, but look at the people Donald Trump hung around with, Stormy Daniels. Yes, That's right. there are pictures wasn't exactly with a Girl Trump Scout. I mean, she wasn't you know, her her reputation there wasn't. Spectacular, and we know and there hasn't, there still has not been a, a viable explanation for the transfer of money from uh, President Trump's uh, entities to a, a holding account that Stormy Daniels has now shown. This is this is core documents. This way, it's a but fact. Is there a transfer. Stormy Daniels connection to Epstein? Do we know that yet? I, I haven't found one for Stormy Daniels. No. Okay, so let's get back to this this young woman, Katie Johnson. So she filed a lawsuit in the fall of 2016 saying that Epstein and Trump raped her when she was 13 years old. The most of the news media pretty much I never heard ignored of it. Uh, I don't know if I even remember this at all. And then immediately after the election, she withdrew the lawsuit. Mm. And the Daily Mail of London ran this article on November 7. 2016 headline troubled woman with a history of drug use 
who claimed she was assaulted by Donald Trump at a Jeffrey Epstein sex party at age 13, made it all up. So I read the entire story. At no point does the Daily Mail explain or say that she made it up. Yeah, they, it's only in the headline. They right. said they got it from a special source, which is not named, which is not characterized, which is very interesting. And then and the, it's not that the, the lawsuit, because the lawsuit was dropped. Katie Johnson withdrew it, but this was a federal lawsuit. She'd but why this. did she drop it on the day after the election? She said she was too afraid oh. to hold a press conference, <laughs> and she had a series of threats against her, her life. And do we see that there is a pattern of threats by Jeffrey Epstein against women Oh, absolutely. Go forward with, with information? Absolutely. It's been alleged by the very government prosecuting so, so now, him. Now we are obligated to go back and look at Katie Johnson's accusation and against Epstein and Trump in 2016. And if she wanted this to go away, she wouldn't put up a website that it says justice for Katie. This is an active website that is... Today? Of yes, course. Yes, it's called today. We called her to yeah, get Yeah, I reached it. out to her. Yeah. You did? Yes, yeah. yeah, we haven't heard back from her, but I did everything in my chest to try to get it updated if she's still carrying forward, especially the fact that the Epstein case has been revived. But the, the website is active. It has her testimony on it or from her deposition. Uh, this just hasn't gone away. And I, I, if, if you are a victim, the safest thing to do is get it out in the open. Yes. The, the, the more that you're in the visible. shadows... The, the, the more that, uh, you know, something bad could happen. Yes, be visible. So 1994 is when this happened, according to her. she was Between June and September. She was 13 years old, and she said that she was uh, subject to rape, criminal sexual acts, assault, battery, and uh, false imprisonment. So let's go into the nitty-gritty, the really... Mm raw details of what she said in 2016 Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein did to her at age 13. All right, so she, uh, Katie Johnson, uh, through a man named uh, Jonathan Loner out of Los Angeles, produced videos. Uh, now, they masked her, her voice and, and her picture. However, the Daily Mail ended up showing a picture of her anyway on that article saying that she dropped the case. Um, she produced a series of video testimonies describing the uh, up to four allegations of rape and sexual assault among intimidation that she's received. The first one being that uh, Jeffrey Epstein and President Trump basically used her as a passed around toy in a sexual competition. This first clip, 42 for control, is uh, Miss Johnson describing, alleging what occurred to her in uh, June through September of 1994. The first time that I met Donald Trump uh, was at a, a party at Jeffrey Epstein's um, mansion. I was 13. Mm-hmm. And he basically asked um, if I could come over and give him um, give him a hand job. And <coughs> sorry, sorry, this is um, a little difficult. difficult but, but, um, um, before, Before I gave, gave him a hand job, job he, he kind of slapped my hand, hand away and said, um, you need to use a glove. glove. And the, the recruiter ran, ran over and handed me a glove and said, no one touches Mr. Trump's penis, penis without a glove. So. By the way, according to her statement, she said uh, when she was 13, when this happened in 1994, she had no idea who Epstein and Trump were. Right. Yeah, why would she? Yeah, at age 13 yeah. in 1994. But she said she didn't know who raped her until... She saw Donald Trump on The Apprentice TV wow. show. That's when she recognized wow. the rapist. And to put both of them together. And now, if there was no connection between Trump and Epstein, I would say, you know. Yeah. This is wild. This, this is, is unfabricated. It's, it's but too crazy. Donald Trump said he's on record saying Epstein was a great guy. And he likes women. He just likes them younger than Mr. Trump likes. He said he had a falling out 15 years ago. Yes. Well, where does that well, This put was us? 1994. Well, they w didn't have the falling out then, did they? Yeah. That's what, 25 years ago? Yes. That's right. So oh. they were buddies at that time. Well, we have pictures of them laughing and hanging out. And we out. just saw Donald Trump with Robert Maxwell. Yes. Guess Lane, Maxwell's father. Yeah, and, a, and, a, and again, a, a, and an Israeli Mossad spy. And who was there? Mike Wallace, mm. a Jewish 
news journalists at CBS One of the News who ask who asked the Shah of Iran. Yes. Oh, yes. I remember that. Now, Your Majesty, are you really saying the Jews control everything? He almost stopped the interview there, yes. but he didn't. Yeah. He answered defiantly. Yes. That's right. And that and that may have been John Tower. I'm not sure. It sure looked like Shorty Tower there. We'll look and right. see. If it was, Tower's the guy. Our control is saying it uh, was. It was Tower. Yeah, our control room is saying it was. Uh, All right, it so was Tower is the one that got the Israeli Mossad into our uh, nuclear research labs, according, according to Gordon Thomas. That's what Gordon Thomas told me. And I think but, Seymour Hersh is also reporting. And it's, uh, it's in Gideon's Spies, the book mm. that the, Gordon wrote. I just saw an article about that today. Well, I, as you heard with Katie Johnson, uh, she detailed uh, the first of the incidents uh, that she alleges ha occurred between her, President Trump, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Epstein. Well, Second time that I saw Mr. Trump um, was same scenario. He was uh, on looking some, uh, an orgy, and uh, Tiffany came over to me and, and said that Donald, Donald Trump had requested that I perform oral sex on him. Um, he came in, and I was basically tied to a bed um, with pantyhose, uh, and. Uh, he tied me, and there was, there was so tight, it, could, it hurt to even like, lay there, and I tried to, you know, try to say something, and I was like, you know, you just, you know, shut up, man, you know, shut up, you know, this is, it was basically like, he was, he was being really, really rough, and, and, and I started to get scared, and, and he was, you know, basically, like, ripping my clothes off, and, and I was actually, really, I started, I, I got freaked out, and just turned on this animal, it was like a completely different, I'm a completely different person. I couldn't do anything about it. And <clears throat> he ripped off all my clothes and he started to basically have sex with me and I was screaming because I've never had sex before, it was my first time, and he, he told, told us to just shut up. He just, just basically took my virginity while I was crying and telling him to stop. And that's basically begging for him, him to just stop. The actions she described there, if they're true, are the actions of a monster. Two monsters. Do we believe the victim? I mean, What's the Me Too campaign about? Isn't that the, their cry, like, the victim's rights, uh, believe the victim? Like, how many times do we have to hear it? Why would she make it up? And this sounds like, this sounds like the women who came forward that said Bill Clinton raped her. That's right. So we had Bill Clinton raping women, all right, and then Hillary Clinton's running against Donald Trump, but women are saying Donald Trump raped him. No. What do we have at the top of this country? We have bipartisan sex perverts. Rape. We yes, have sex bipartisan perversion. sex perverts. Yes, and you, at CPAC, Donald Trump brought up Bill Clinton going to Jeffrey Epstein's island. He said that uh, uh, Sean Hannity asked him about um, a Bill Clinton, like just like a one-off. Give me, what do you think? He goes, well, he's in a lot of trouble because of that island with, uh, with Epstein. But notice it didn't become a main fixture, a main topic. Instead, the lock her yeah. up, build the wall, all the other things we've heard during the campaign. President Trump didn't go out of his way to use what some might argue be the smoking gun in the dossier of scandals for Bill Clinton is the Lita Express. There are documents. There's a man who has pled guilty to being a sex criminal, a child sex criminal. Talking about Jeffrey Epstein and a documented relationship between the Clintons and that man. You ever wonder why it didn't get used by President Trump? They also didn't want to talk about pizza pedophiles mm. and perverts using pizza-related terms to describe their fetishes with children. And then a couple months ago, the Ars Technica writer, uh, who was going by the name Miss Dr. Dr. Pizza, Dr. Pizza, admitting that he was a pedophile, loved being a uh, pedophile. Just a coincidence. His name's yeah. Dr. Pizza. Yeah. Yeah. The, folks, the, the, the pedophilia network is so deep. It's in the Roman Catholic Church. It's in the Pentagon. It's in the FBI. It's... 
it's all through our society and it's wicked, it's evil, it's demonic. I mean, anybody, when you get to this level, you, you're, you're so demonically possessed, I, I, can't even, I can't even comprehend people doing something like that to a 13-year-old girl. 13? Grown men, all right, fighting over who was going to take her virginity. She said she was tied to a bed. It's disgusting. All right, what's our next one? Uh, so there, uh, in addition to these two very graphic uh, allegations by Ms. Johnson, um, she also alleged uh, there were some statements made by President Trump at the time, Donald Trump, uh, to Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, what she alleged, uh, you're going to hear in this clip, is uh, a certain use of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you're going to hear it believed in this, but uh, she called him a Jew, so-and-so. And uh, she, she also details that... But who said it first? Uh, this would have been President uh, Donald Trump She's saying it. She's quoting President She's quoting Trump. it. She's quoting it, and, and this was actually detailed in both the uh, filing in the Central uh, District Court, the Federal District Court in California, and uh, in the sound that you're about to hear from her. Okay. Speaking about Epstein. All right. Well, sometimes before the party, she would come over, um, and him, Jeffrey Epstein and himself would kind of banter back and forth, and he was very, uh, Donald Trump was very racist. He said a lot of racist things, like there was, uh, there was a lot of comments um, towards Mr. Epstein about, you know, being Jewish, um, and, and called him a Jew, um, so that he was chief, and there were some words I, I didn't even understand, something about um, his, his pe you know, the shape of his penis. Um, being directly related to his mole, or I mean, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the Jew, you know, the Jewish tradition, so. Off the rip, you might dismiss this, but there's something interesting here is, uh, Mr. Epstein gave a deposition in 2010, and he was asked point blank about his relationship with uh, then Donald Trump. He was asked, have you ever socialized with Donald Trump in the presence of females under the age of 18? Now, uh, Mr. Epstein replied, Though I'd like to answer that question, at least today, I'm going to have to assert my fifth, sixth, and fourteenth amendment rights, sir. What? Yes, he, he claimed the fifth in this question. And this, again, this, this could come up in an investigation. When, when, when did that happen? 2010. So this was after the sweetheart deal, but during a time period where Mr. Epstein was free. He was dealing wastefully with the, the remainder of payoff lawsuits or uh, even attempts to unseal the 2008 plea deal. All right, we have one more video. We've got to wrap it up. We're, we're pushing two hours here. Uh, the, the, what are we going to hear in this last video? You're going to hear Ms. Johnson uh, repeat something we've heard from a previous uh, woman claiming allegations of uh, basically sexual conduct between President Trump and herself. This is, I'm referring back to Stormy Daniels. And during a, an interview with Anderson Cooper, CNN's uh, host there, uh, Stormy Daniels claimed that Prior to having sex with Donald Trump, again, this hasn't been confirmed, but she claimed that Donald Trump brought up Ivanka, said to Stormy Downs after uh, she had spanked him, that uh, she reminded him of his daughter. What are you going to hear sorry, Katie so, Johnson I, I, say? I, I just wanna, so Stormy Daniels, the, the, this porn star, yes. said that just before she had sex with Donald Trump, according to her story, and that she had spanked Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Yes. Donald Trump said to her, you remind me of my daughter. Yes. Ivanka. You're beautiful. You're smart. Y Yael Kushner, whom he has said in the past, he's, he's insinuated that he wishes he could have sex with his daughter. Yeah, if she wasn't my daughter, she's so beautiful. Which is one of the strangest, most bizarre so weird. weird statements I've ever heard. Not just one time either. See, now when you start, we, when we start looking at all this stuff, you start putting all this stuff out here, you go, okay, this, this is really starting to, to make my stomach turn. Yes, and you know that the, the famous or infamous NBC slip up he said when he was talking about grab him in the. Yes. It makes sense now understood. because yeah. this is the mindset you need to think like that, that you have that power, that you can just go and do that. Well, this is the, the next level. Yeah, okay, so this last video is Katie Johnson describing what she claims Donald Trump said to her when she was 13 years old. Watch this. The one night that I had the blonde wig on, um, he mentioned that I looked 
like, you know, I looked and liked him, you know, that I reminded him of his daughter. Um, and actually, the, the, the maid fantasy, I didn't have a blonde wig on. <clears throat> I was trying to stay away from blonde wigs at the time. But he actually requested, told Tiffany that that's what he wanted me to wear. Like, he wanted it. And, he's, and anytime I put it on, anytime I had it on and he'd see me, he would say, oh, man, you look and just And it wasn't like a, oh, you remind me of my daughter. It was this sick, evil, like, hmm, you remind me of my daughter. It was just this weird pleasure, sick smile. Like, I... She was 13 years old. And if she's telling the truth, he just raped her. Yes. And then he said, you remind me of my daughter. Well, I don't even know what to say. Hey, if this stuff is true about Donald Trump, this man needs to resign and be indicted and in prison. And I, I would hope that he would share a cell with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, we have many accusations who, who is, it goes to deaf ears. No, Juanita Jackson, I mean, the... This... We've wondered over the years who paid for Bill Clinton's get-out-of-jail-free card. Mm. Who has enough power to keep Clinton out of prison? How could Clinton rape women and get away with it? How could he have people killed, people that threatened his career, and, and they show up did. They have committed Arkansas. I'm not it, saying that Bill Clinton himself went out and killed, but people died. That, that there's came a body in. trail. There's a trail of corpses behind Bill Clinton. Wait, who has this power? So, was Bill Clinton, what was Bill Clinton's weakness? Women. Women. Did, it, did the Israeli Mossad feed Bill Clinton what he craved, what he lusted for? Does that explain Monica Lewinsky, nice Jewish girl, mm. in the White House? I mean, folks, we have a major uh, scandal, and it's, it's deep, it's wicked. It, it goes to the core of what's wrong with America. It's almost too much for people to believe. Yes. And so they just go into denial. I don't want to deal with it. That's what the attitude of the people. I just don't want to deal with it. It's too much. Well, if you want to talk about the Epstein sex scandal, this is it, folks. Yeah. Okay? This is the heart of it. Like, yeah, get in contact with us because we're obviously going to talk about it. We're going to shed light on it. If you need, if you're a victim, reach out. Uh, there's uh, no Ben voice. Shapiro said he's going to freeze me out. Oh, yeah. Well, there's another threat. Yeah. I don't think that's a light either. Like, the people will say, oh, he's just joking or sure, whatever. I know. Yeah, sure. Sure, he's just joking. We've had threats against us by oh, Jewish I've individuals. Had for, I've had it for 20 years. You know, I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me. Um, this bothers you. This bothers me. That it's... makes me disgusted. It makes me disgusted. All right. I gave you one hour, 44 minutes of mm. vilest news that we could dig up today. What are you going to do with it, my friends? America, your only hope is Jesus Christ. Amen. How much of this stuff does it take to make you just break down and weep and cry and beg God to forgive this nation? Our only hope is Jesus Christ. And that's the purpose of us doing this report. All right. We we're showing you this is this is what we've turned into as a nation. We this is what we've become. And our only hope is the nation repents and turns to God. And I believe God is showing us how how sinful we have become. He warned Sodom and Gomorrah. He yes. warned them. Yes. He, he warned them. He gave them a yes. chance. I think we're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Second time that I saw Mr. Trump um, was same scenario. He was uh, on looking some, at an orgy, and uh, Tiffany came over to me and, and said that Donald, Donald Trump had requested that I perform oral sex on him. Um, he came in, and I was basically tied to a bed um, with pantyhose, uh, and. Uh, he tied him, and it was, it was so tight, I could, it, it hurt to even, like, lay there, and I tried to, you know, try to say something, and I was like, you know, and he just, you know, shut up, you know, shut up, bitch, you know, this is, 
It was basically like he was, he was being really, really rough, and, and, and I started to get scared, and, and he was, you know, basically like ripping my clothes off, and, and I was actually really, I started, I got freaked out, and just turned into this animal. I was like a completely different, um, completely different person. I couldn't do anything about it. And <clears throat> he ripped off all my clothes and he started to basically have sex with me and I was screaming because I'd never had sex before. It was my first time and he just told, told us to just shut, shut the fuck, fuck up and just, just basically took my virginity. While, While I was crying, crying and telling him to stop, and that's basically begging for him to just stop. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the website, Justice for Katie, just so you can take a look. We'll play a little bit of the video of the testimony, but this is just to show you where the website is, so you can go and see her full testimony. It's like 28 minutes long. So this is the Justice for Katie website. They've established a legal trust fund for her defense, I guess, and maybe for the prosecution, uh, whatever, you know, whatever legal activity they need it for. And here, if you go under the charge link, this is where you'll find the section that shows the allegations and her testimony. So if we go down here, Justice for Katie, let's see, there it is. I don't know, they didn't show up at first. So, this video here, this is her full testimony. And this here, I will just include in the video. Or, I just included, you just saw this. Okay, so go here, hit the Vimeo link, and you can watch the video. We'll play just a little bit because it's copyrighted, so I don't want to, you know, violate their copyright. This is just for uh, the purpose of uh, covering the story, so... I came to this interview on my free will. No, there was nothing promised to me for doing this interview. Excellent. Yes, everything that I say at this interview will be the truth. Um, I met Donald Trump um, at some parties I attend um, that I was working um, for Mr. Jeffrey Epstein. Um, there was about three or four times that I um, had encounters with Donald Trump. I was 13. The first time that I met Donald Trump uh, was at uh, a party at Jeffrey Epstein's um, mansion. Uh, we were, he was, there was a, um, an orgy going on and he was kind of watching off in the distance. Um, okay, so we can see by this testimony that she places Donald Trump at Epstein's mansion and says further uh, indicates that there was an orgy going on and Donald Trump was there and you can go and listen to the rest of this testimony it's 28 minutes long I suggest you do it it's very 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 interesting uh, you know make sure there's no kids around this is some pretty uh, harsh stuff so there you go that's uh, the conclusion of this report I hope it was helpful and remember the truth is out there waiting to be found remember the truth is out there waiting to be found wake up Take the red pill. Join the red pill in war. Break the matrix. Free your mind. Take the red pill.